Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Loto Shosaba. Shosaba Riatola Koshaba. Lift up your voice and just rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. He is with us. He is in us. He's working through us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Every believer can have this. Every believer can have this. Every believer can have this. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. We'll get back in the lesson in a minute, but I think somebody feels like they'd like to come down here and just move around and worship God for a minute. That would be absolutely in order. We'll get back in the lesson in just a minute, but the Spirit of God is moving in this room. You say, you say, Pastor Raymond, I came here for a school of the Scripture tonight. I brought my notebook. I think notebooks are very important. I commend you for that. But we need the teaching and the moving of God's Spirit. Amen. It has to go together. You say, I think this is a little over the top. I think this is a little extreme. I think this is a little crazy. Well, first of all, you would be in the minority at Tabernacle of Joy if you think that. <laughs> These are not drunk as you suppose. This is that. This is that. We've got that because we've got this. Yes, yes. Okay, now, you're really messing up my lesson. So would you go sit down for a minute? I'm just teasing, you know. Them. Thank God for the move of His Spirit. Thank God we're not like dead, dry, boring, dull, ritualistic, formal church. Thank God this church is alive through the power of the Spirit. Now here's what's so important. Is you've got to remember that you don't receive the Holy Ghost through your head. And you won't operate in the Holy Ghost through your head. You receive the Holy Ghost 
through your heart because you're hungry for it. You don't receive it because you learn so much about it. You receive it because you get so hungry for it that you don't care what you look like. You don't care what you sound like. You don't care what anybody else thinks. You get so hungry for it that your heart receives it. And Jesus talked about this in the Word of God. And it's so important to realize because the same way we receive the Holy Ghost is the same way we must then operate in the Holy Ghost. You don't operate in the Holy Ghost through your head. You operate in the Holy Ghost through your heart, your spirit connection with God. And Jesus told us this, John chapter 7, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Stop right there. The word belly is the Greek word kolaya. It means womb. Out of his womb will flow. Rivers of living water. You see, whether you are male or female is not the issue. Every human being has a spiritual womb. Every human being can give birth to something supernatural through their life if they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. So look, look at what Jesus is saying. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his womb shall be flowing rivers of living water. What he's saying is, if you get filled with my spirit, you can birth something in the supernatural through your life. Out of your spiritual womb will flow rivers of living water. Now, you don't have to guess what he was talking about. The very next verse says, This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Aren't you glad that Jesus has been glorified, so the Holy Ghost has been given, so we can receive it, and out of your womb... Whether you're male or female, you've got a spiritual womb. You need to connect with the Holy Ghost so you can give birth to something supernatural. You won't do that through your head. You'll only do that through your hunger for God, through your heart. And so you could say this, that the belly bypasses the brain. Now, I'm not talking about your recent diet attempt, okay? Because the belly has bypassed the brain for many of us. But, but what I'm saying is, in the spirit realm... That hunger for God, that spiritual womb. If you get hungry for God, you don't have to figure it out. In fact, you never will figure it out. How you can be worshiping God and praying in tongues and a miracle can happen. You, you, you can't figure that out. The belly bypasses the brain. Now, I, I want to bring this to you because I think it's really neat. And so we're going to step outside of Scripture for just a second to confirm Scripture. This is a study done three years ago at, by researchers at the University of Pennsylvania in, in USA. And they ran an article on the uh, front page of one of the sections of the New York Times. And this precious, spirit-filled woman from Ghana, she was in a picture on the front page of one of the sections of the New York Times three years ago. Uh, they didn't call it This Is That. That's my title, okay? <laughs> it would have been a better title for the article. Um, their, their title for the article is a little bit more scientific. But these researchers, they, they did this article. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania, they found that there is a neurological parallel between what worshipers experience when they speak in tongues and what actually transpires physiologically in the brain. Scientists took brain images from worshipers while they were doing a variety of religious things. Singing, praying, meditating, reading the Bible, uh, doing all kinds of things. And then they took uh, brain images of worshipers that were speaking in tongues. Now I've just got to say that I think that's wonderful that they could hook up all these electrodes and wires to people's brains and they could still speak in tongues because I know Pentecostals that if somebody walks out the back door, they're totally distracted by the whole service and they can't worship God. I, I think it's really cool that they hooked up all these distractions and people still worship God. So that was enough for me. I thought it was really good then, but it's better than that. So they, they hook up all this stuff and they, they compare two images. And so in the frontal lobe of your brain, uh, right, right up here in the frontal lobe, that is the willful thinking 
part of the brain. That is where the speech centers are in the brain. And so here's what they did. Uh, when, when they compared the images, uh, here's, here's what happened. On, on this side, uh, the worshiper is singing a gospel song, and they did many different activities, and, and this is what they found. If you notice circled at the top, that's the frontal lobes of the brain, and that's the willful thinking part of the brain. And when you're singing a gospel song, you're processing words. And when you're 